Hello and welcome to my June reading wrap-up. I read 15 books in June. It was a really good reading month. I got a lot done, and both in terms of quantity and quality. Had some really great reads as well. Um, of the 15 books I read, two were ebooks, two were audiobooks, 11 were physical, and of the 11 physical, one was from the library, one was a reread, and nine were off of my physical TBR, which is what I really care about in terms of numbers. But let's just get right into the books, so this isn't a four hour long video. The first book that I finished in June was a carryover from May, and that is Kiss Cut by Karen Slaughter. And honestly, I'm going to credit her with my really good reading month, because I do think reading two of her books at the end of May, beginning of June, really just put me in the mood to read more because I enjoy her so much and they flew by so fast and I just wanted to devour everything after that. So this is an adult thriller, the second book in the Grant County series, which centers on a small town pediatrician in Georgia, who is also the town's coroner, and then her ex-husband, who she's kind of dating again-ish, <laughs> who is the chief of police, and they kind of investigate crimes together, um, and also have a lot of like interpersonal conflict with themselves and the other characters in the book. I gave this four stars. It's a cast full of awful people who you kind of love, you really hate. I love the characters. I think she does a really good job with the character perspectives. They just all come at situations with completely different points of view and when you're in one character's head all of their action makes sense and then you cut to another character's head and they're just like why would you do this completely idiotic thing? And you're like, yeah, that was actually kind of weird and irrational. It just made sense 20 pages ago. And she's really good with that. I do think the plot in this book, like the actual like mystery, got a little bit overblown and a little bit like unwieldy for her to handle. It was kind of this pedophile ring conspiracy that was, you know, it started off small and then just kept like growing throughout the country and it was a little bit much wasn't bad just like not my favorite of her mysteries but i really read these books for the characters anyway so i enjoyed it then i read the memoirs of mary queen of scots by carly erickson which is a historical fiction about mary queen of scots from her perspective it's essentially her memoirs that she's writing when she's being held prisoner by elizabeth the first um, I gave this two stars. I was thoroughly unimpressed with everything about this book and I have a full review in case you're interested in my lengthy thoughts, but to, to sum it up, the characterization was not there. Mary Queen of Scots had no personality. I really don't know how you write a book about Mary Queen of Scots and just make her utterly bland and boring because if you look at history, she had a lot going for her just in terms of interest. <laughs> She did a lot of things, good or bad. You know, you could write the book either way. But Carolee Erickson kind of took the middle road of just like, this woman has no personality, no motivations, no desires. She's just kind of nothing. Um, so that was not great. And then the actual narration was incredibly lacking as well. It felt like a collection of scenes instead of like a singular narrative. It ran in chronological order, but there was really nothing that like connected it together to make it like a full story which I was really not a fan of and it was also incredibly historically inaccurate but like in a way that just made it more boring <laughs> like the things that Mary Queen of Scots actually did were so much more interesting than the made-up things for this book like if you want to like make her whatever that's fine like make up a bunch of stuff it's historical fiction do what you want but like at least make the made up stuff a lot more interesting than the actual history because then it was just kind of like I, I'd rather be reading about her real life than reading this but I just I was thoroughly unimpressed. Then I listened to Cast the Origin of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. This is a nonfiction book about race in America that kind of takes race and turns it into a caste system and looks at America through that lens and she draws a lot of parallels to the Indian caste system and also Nazi era Germany. So it kind of ties those three timelines together and makes a lot of comparisons and just talks about race in America. Um, I gave this three stars. I didn't really enjoy it and I don't know 
if part of my issue with this book was that I was feeling a little bit burned out on audiobooks on my commute, I kind of took a week or two off after this just because I was kind of not really feeling it. And I do think that might have like contributed to my non-enjoyment of this, but it felt very simplistic. Like it talked about a lot of like basic concepts and didn't really delve deep into like the research. There were a lot of anecdotes and I do think like there's an important place for anecdotes in books like this, but I just found it a little bit lacking and there was a lot of like repetition of like the same basic points over and over again. And I do think it's a good book. It was, it took an interesting perspective, like discussing America through a caste lens when it comes to race and like throughout history and how caste has kind of like changed the way we see things. And like, it's an interesting perspective and it did have like a lot of good things going for it. I just found myself kind of bored and like not really paying attention. And I think in terms of race, I have read better books. And I wasn't the only one thinking of this because I did look at a number of reviews after I read the book and there were a few people who were like, this is probably kind of like simplistic if you've read a number of books about race in America but it's still like it has good concepts it is interesting it's just very much like an intro book like if this is your first book reading about race in america you'll probably get a lot more out of it than if it's like your eighth so that was kind of how i felt it was worthwhile i would recommend picking it up but it probably wouldn't be like one of my favorites then i read the lightning thief by rick riordan um the first in the percy jackson books which i read for my 12th book project um, and this was recommended to me by Javier, who's one of my subscribers. This is a middle grade fantasy book about Percy, who is the son of a god, and he goes to Camp Half-Blood, where a bunch of people are sons of gods, and, like, they fight monsters from Greek mythology, and, I mean, it's Percy Jackson. I feel like it's very well known at this point. I gave this three stars. It was really fun. Like, it was such a fun time. I just feel like, for me, it wasn't really kind of my vibe. It, the writing style in this is super chatty and super just like talking to the reader, making jokes to the reader, like kind of rhetorical questions and stuff like that. And I'm not a really big fan of that writing style. I like to feel more in a narrative than like conversational. It's just not my thing. I don't think it's bad, just like not for me. And I do think in general, Greek mythology is always a little bit of a hard sell for me. I'm not super interested in Greek mythology anymore. I feel like I had that phase in middle school and then I lost it pretty quickly and I've never really desired to go back, but it was a fun time. Like if this were a trilogy, I would want to continue on. I would want to keep reading because like I was down for the adventure and kind of the friendships that were being made and everything that was happening. I just don't feel like I care to go on that journey for another nine books. That's a little bit much for me, but I did have a lot of fun with this one. And then my highlight of the book was Girl Sleuth, Nancy Drew and the Women Who Created Her by Melanie Rahak. This was my one five-star read of the month and I really, really loved it. This is just a nonfiction book about Nancy Drew and the people who created her, the ghostwriters behind her, the Stratemeyer Syndicate, which was the company that owned her, and just the culture of the time and how that informed on her creation. and. I loved it. Like, it was so interesting. It was a much slower, denser book than I was expecting because it does have a lot of historical context, a lot of discussion on feminism and the 1920s, the 1950s, the 1970s, and how that all contributed to the creation of the character, but also just, like, the longevity of her popularity. And it was really, really enjoyable. Like, I learned so much. I really loved the behind the scenes of the publishing. Like, if you're interested in, like, the publishing of children's books in the 20th century, especially the early 20th century, and kind of, like, what it meant, it was really, really interesting. There was a lot of discussions on book bannings and, you know, how that was happening a hundred years ago and how Nancy Drew was really looked down upon a hundred years ago. And it was just really, really interesting. Um, it was not the light, fun read I was expecting, and I do think that's a reason that it gets kind of more negative reviews because I was I was wondering why the rating was only like 3.5 because it was a really wonderfully researched book and I think people were probably expecting like a lighter more Nancy Drew vibes kind of book but this was fantastic 
I highly recommend if you have any interest in Nancy Drew because I just absolutely devoured this. It was so interesting. And then I'm sure surprising no one after I read that, I picked up an actual Nancy Drew book, um, The Hidden Staircase by Carolyn King, which is book two in the Nancy Drew series. I would have read book one, but then I realized I didn't have book one. Um, so this is a middle grade uh, detective novel about a teenage girl named Nancy Drew whose father is a lawyer and she's kind of an amateur detective. And she goes to visit her friends who claim they have a ghost who's like harassing them and stealing their stuff. And she kind of investigates that at the same time that her father is working on this railroad case. And then, you know, things kind of coincide and it becomes the same case as it does. Um, this was really fun. I gave it three stars. To be honest, I did find the writing a little bit distracting because it is very abrupt and it felt too short and just like, and I don't mean too short, like it's only 180 pages, I wanted it to be 300, but just like the scenes were too short, the conversations were too short, it felt very like abrupt in the writing, like it just needed to be like given the time it needed to grow, um, but it was super fun, like it was fun to return to Nancy Drew. I would honestly like to read some more because I did enjoy her a lot as a kid and it's been a long time since I read any. There There by Tommy Orange. This is an adult fiction novel about a group of characters who are all going to Oakland's first powwow. They have their own reasons, their own motivations for attending, some you know very positive, some not so positive, some very personal, some of them are working there, and it's just a look at these casts of characters and what this powwow means to them. I gave this four stars. It was really well done. I love the characters in this. Like, there are so many characters. I think there are like 12 or something, and it, it's not a very long book. So you get the point of view of like these dozen characters and like why they're all going to a powwow, and what they're doing there, and like their backstories, and like what's led them to this point in their lives. And it's so well crafted and so well written. His writing is absolutely gorgeous and like the emotion in this is so powerful, like especially the rage. There's this undercurrent of rage like throughout the entire book that's just so well done. I adored this. The only reason I couldn't give it five stars was because I do feel like with so many characters and so much going on, towards the second half and towards the end there was like a chapter or two where I kind of got lost and like I couldn't figure out who the character was, I couldn't figure out who was talking, like, I couldn't figure out, like, where I was in the story and what this meant for, like, the overarching, like, themes. And if I hadn't gotten lost, I might have given this five stars, but, like, I did love this so much. It was absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend. Then I read Fallout by Sarah Paretsky, which is, I think, the 18th book in the V.I. Warshawski series. Um, it's a long-running, apparently, detective series about a woman who is a private detective and takes on various cases, and in this case, she is tasked to find this young black boy who has gone missing by his cousin, who's very worried, no one's heard from him, no one really knows his friends, and then that leads her to an old movie star, and then small towns in Mississippi and kind of the underlying racism that's still present, and then big government conspiracy. <laughs> I gave this three stars. It wasn't bad, it just really wasn't my vibe. I'd wanted to try Sarah Paretsky for a minute because she is such a big name in like thriller books and I'd never read one so I picked up this one and I feel like this will probably be <laughs> my only Sarah Paretsky. I didn't really love the writing style. I feel like much the same as Percy Jackson. It had like a very chatty like almost talking to the reader vibe and like I didn't like it in Percy Jackson but it fit for that pretty well like it fit the tone whereas in here it's like in an adult thriller where there's like murders happening and missing people and like bad things going on I don't really like that like super casual chatty style it just hit the wrong note for me and then the actual mystery just like kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and turned into like this huge massive like military conspiracy like not that I don't believe the government would do that it's just like a I don't believe that like this private detective would just accidentally stumble across it and b it was just way too big for my taste like I like my thrillers a lot more like small down to earth like 
real realistic vibes and this was very like kind of over the top and I kind of just like felt myself losing interest the bigger and more melodramatic that it got but it was fine I get why people like her it just mostly wasn't for me A Man Called Ova by Frederick Bachman this is an adult fiction novel about an elderly man whose wife has just passed away and he's just been let go from his job and he's planning his own death because he's kind of done with life there is nothing left for him he's this crotchety grumbly old man and then he starts interacting more with his neighbors who require things from him and he's very crotchety and grumbly at them <laughs> and then it kind of just keeps going and you start to see a little bit of heart in the story and a little bit of love there and I gave this four stars I really enjoyed it but <laughs> big caveat to that most of what i enjoyed about this was the superficial sadness that i felt <laughs> i cried for like two-thirds of this book and i had a really good time crying i love when a book makes me cry and i just kept crying forever um it really hit like the same notes as ps i love you where i was just sobbing my eyes out but like at the end of the day I did not think it was that great of a book. Like I was very much on the fence between three and four stars and like if something makes me cry that hard I'm always gonna go a little higher. But I did feel like despite the fact that it succeeded in making me cry it did feel like very shallow. Like I wasn't crying because I thought it was amazing. I was crying because he hit kind of all those like cheap ploys that just like get to you real deep and it was very contrived and I struggled a lot with that and I also struggled with the fact that I think Ova was a pretty terrible person and not in like a lovable grumbly old man kind of way but like and that he was an actively terrible human being who screamed at service workers in order to get like a discount and it, I found it very unpleasant to read um that he was also like incredibly fat phobic and it was never really discussed honestly I would have enjoyed it more if he'd been like the lovable grump instead of like kind of awful but I still enjoyed this book I could see myself going back for a reread whenever I want to have like a really good cry again the number one ladies detective agency by Alexander McCall Smith this is an adult mystery novel about an African woman named Ma Ramatsui who uses her inheritance from her father's death to buy her own detective agency and is the first ladies detective agency in all of Botswana and this book just covers like her first few mysteries and like the crimes that she's paid to investigate and she follows like cheating husbands and wayward schoolgirls and then actually goes on an investigation to find the missing child and it's really cute and fun and I gave it three stars because to be honest cute and fun aren't really my vibe um much like the Sarah Paretsky book I didn't think this was bad so much as it was just clearly not written for me like it was funny and I just don't do funny in books and I could like appreciate what it was doing and I felt like it was doing it well it's just like I didn't really enjoy what it was doing but like it was funny because this woman is just running her detective agency and like She's got men knocking down her door, like, begging for her hand in marriage. Like, multiple men. Men who are just, like, absolutely loving on her. And she's just like, mm, I think I'll pass. Like, can't you see I'm a little bit busy running the best ladies detective agency in the country? And she was kind of a badass. And, like, you gotta give her credit for that. Um, this is a whole series. I'm not gonna read anymore. It's just, like... I would highly recommend it if it sounds like your kind of thing. It honestly reminded me a lot of like an adult version of Encyclopedia Brown because all the mysteries are like kind of short and quick and fun and, and you're just like here for the good times and I don't know like I felt like it was a good book it was just a good book that was written for a different reader. Then I listened to Rogues True Stories of Grifters, Killers, Rebels, and Crooks by Patrick Ryden Keefe. This is just a collection of articles that he's written um I think mostly for the New Yorker but I'm not really sure but I really love this I love Patrick Ryden Keefe um I picked this up because I really like him as a writer not so much because I was interested in the subject matter um but I gave this four stars it's just articles that he's written that are all like kind of crime related in some way he wrote one about a death penalty lawyer and the Boston Marathon bomber who was on trial. 
he wrote another about like this mob family <laughs> in the Netherlands. He wrote another about like political corruption in Guinea. And then he wrote one about Anthony Bourdain, which I really wasn't sure where that one fit in. I guess like technically under like rebel because like the only illegal thing Anthony Bourdain <laughs> ever did was like drugs in the 90s. Um, but it was a really good collection. He's a great writer. He's an even better researcher. He talks some at the beginning of this book about like how his favorite articles to write were the one where you're writing about a subject who won't interview with you for whatever reason. So like he wrote one about El Chapo and like obviously he's not going to be granted an interview with El Chapo. And you just write the book using interviews from other sources and like outside research and you craft this profile without like the subject actually contributing and he talked about like how he liked doing that and he's so good at doing that even when he does interview the subject you can really see how he relies on that outside research and he doesn't necessarily just take them for granted at like everything they're saying because like sometimes in the book you can see him like subtly calling people out and being like well what this person said in the interview doesn't exactly line up with like the outside research that I conducted. Um, it was really, really interesting and well done. And just like a great collection. I would definitely recommend if you like journalism or just like good writing like that or true crime because it did hit on true crime as well. It was just like really, really interesting. The Fallout Family Book One, Wasteland Woes by Isaac Cook Khan. This is a middle grade dystopic novel about two siblings and their dog who go on adventures in the wasteland. I gave this four stars. This was an arc that I received in exchange for a review and I really really enjoyed it. It was such a sweet story. It's just about a th I think a 13 year old boy and his six year old sister and they come across a dog who becomes like their dog and you get the perspective of the dog mostly throughout the story and you follow them as like the boy is a scavenger and like goes out during the day to like find things to find resources to like help them survive because they're on their own and then like at one point he loses his prosthetic leg and like that kind of sends them on this adventure to find the leg and it was just like a really well done sweet story like I really really enjoyed it. It was only 68 pages so it's like I feel like you don't really have a good reason not to pick this up because it's like an hour of reading and it was just so enjoyable and so worth the hour. Um, I did have like a few small issues with the writing there was like some tense switching between like past and present which I didn't love I found kind of distracting and it had like a lot of fragments that like kind of interrupted the flow of the writing style but that got better throughout the book and it was just like a really sweet wholesome like fun vibe um I really really enjoyed it. The Refugees by Viet Thanh Nguyen this is an adult fiction short story collection about um largely Vietnamese refugees to America and just like stories of their lives and it covers like a variety of people a variety of tones some of the stories are abs absolutely heartbreaking and then some are kind of hopeful and some are sweet and some are like bittersweet it was just like this really like complex collection of stories I gave it four stars I loved it like so emotionally powerful like some of these were such a gut punch he had one that I really loved about a Vietnamese girl whose half-sister was a refugee to America and the American sister came back to visit her in Vietnam at one point and it just had such a strong emotional undercurrent and you feel it so hard like it was an absolutely stunningly written collection. I loved it so much. The first one almost made me cry. It was about a girl who lost her brother in her escape to America and it was just really wonderful. Like I highly recommend this collection. I would really like to read more from Wynne just because the writing was so good. Like I just, I would really love to read more from him, but this was absolutely fantastic. Winter Birds by Jim Grimsley. This is an adult fiction, semi-autobiographical novel about a young boy in rural North Carolina in the 60s, I believe, who is being abused by his father. And it's just the story of this boy and his family and how they're coping with this abuse. Um, I gave this four stars. It was really like wonderful. I loved the juxtaposition of like the beautiful writing with like the absolutely horrific 
context and the subject of the story and the father's abuse, it's really graphic. It's really hard to read because he does go in deep in depth on like a lot of the abuse and like it hurts to read in some ways, but it was also so well written and so lovely in a way. And he just really captures that emotion and like the gut punch of just like the fear that they experience, like knowing that their father is there and always like waiting for the other shoe to drop. And you kind of see the cycles of abuse, like sometimes it's getting worse and he's drinking more and abusing more. And then sometimes he's not drinking and like they're less afraid of him, but they're always kind of just like waiting for it to get worse again. And it was just a really well done book. Um, I did give it four stars because I did feel like he was just missing something like the writing was lovely the subject matter was horrifying and it was just like a good story it just wasn't really doing a lot outside of that there wasn't a really strong narrative thread like it wasn't telling a story it was more of like a collection of like almost memories and I do wonder if that comes from the fact that this is semi-autobiographical and he was just writing some of his memories or like fictionalized versions of them and it didn't really get turned into like a full story, it felt like, but it was still really well done. I really enjoyed it. And then the final book that I finished was Water, Tales of Elemental Spirits by Robin McKinley and Peter Dickinson. This is a fantasy short story collection, um, mostly about mermaids, but like anything magical as it pertains to the water. I gave it three stars. <laughs> it's six short stories plus a prologue, and I really enjoyed five of the stories like they were good stories it was just like I don't know it was fine like I have no real complaints on this except like I don't really care about any of them none of them were really memorable to me none of them were more than just like enjoyable fun reads I don't know it was kind of the epitome of fine I don't have a whole lot to say I really enjoyed one of the stories Water Horse by Robin McKinley that was a really moving, touching story, but apart from that, I don't remember the specifics of many of them. Some of them felt kind of like fairy tale esque so if you're more into like fairy tale type stories, you might enjoy it more than me. I liked Robin McKinley's stories better than Peter Dickinson's, and I would like to read more of Robin McKinley, just like maybe go for a novel next time instead of her short stories. Um, but there was nothing wrong with this, like there was only one story I didn't enjoy, it was just like they were all kind of like a three star level of enjoyment except for water horse which was probably four and i don't know it was just kind of a three star fine read overall so that was everything that i read in june let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them if you have and as always thank you so much for watching and i will see y'all again soon